all right coming soon fans i'm here with the wonderful actors lyndon smith hello lyndon how are you today i'm great i'm great this is awesome it's like working from home uh, that's very very nice indeed and it is a nice home uh, uh, you have in the background we are recording this interview during holiday season uh, uh, what are what's your plan for these days uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to go see my parents uh, and my brother. They live in Florida. So I'm going to leave to see them for a few days. And then I'm going to go to Costa Rica for New Year's with some friends. And I've never been to Costa Rica. I'm very, very excited. So it's going to be a fun couple of weeks. That sounds uh, amazing. Uh, I looked at your Instagram stories and it appears that you're a fan of Negroni's Bagliato. Uh, are you planning <laughs> to have a few ones on uh, New, Year's Eve, New Year's Eve? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Negroni is like one of my go to cocktails of all time. And I would actually never tried the Spagliato version until obviously we all saw that famous um, that clip. And uh, I was like, wait swap out with Prosecco that sounds amazing so I, that was my first one that I ever made last night um and it was way too good way too good I've had a white Negroni before and obviously the classic so that was my third version of Negroni <laughs> I agree I agree it is good indeed um we are here to discuss I mean I would love to discuss about cocktails and Negroni yeah. <laughs> but still we are here to discuss a little bit about natural treasure age of history uh how did you land the role of FBI agent Ross it was, you know, I read for it um, September of last year. And I remember when I got the audition, I was like, oh my gosh, National Treasure. I didn't know they were going to make a series of this. This is so exciting. I know the fan base has been wanting a third movie for so long. And to actually turn it into a show, I think is so modern and fresh. Everybody loves streaming and binging shows these days. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is genius. I would love to be a part of this. And also to have the juggernaut that is Disney Plus to be behind your show. Um, so I read for it, just like everybody else. And then I didn't hear anything for probably a month. And then I got a call that um, the Wibberleys and Mira Nair, uh, the director for the first episode, wanted to do a Zoom meeting with me. So I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know I was in the conversation on this anymore. Had a great meeting with them. They explained what they wanted to do with the character and the show. I was immediately hooked, wanted to do it. And then it was right before Christmas that they officially extended the offer. So that was like a very good Christmas gift for me last year. Uh, I get so yeah, traditional, traditional casting process. I can guess that it was a nice, a very nice Christmas gift. Um, I was a kid when National Treasure came out and I have very fond memories uh, of it. I'd like to ask if you watched the movie as a teenager uh, or did you watch it later in your life? It's so funny. I am the one cast member who had not seen the movies before I got at the job. Uh, everybody else like grew up with them and loved them. I of course knew the National Treasure movies, like everybody knows these movies, but I hadn't seen them until I actually got the job. And I remember wondering, it's been 15 years, are, are these movies gonna hold up? Because sometimes you go back and you watch those movies from your childhood and it's like, oh, this is not good anymore. Um, and I loved them. I thought they were so delightful. I thought they were so fun. I loved how they wove history into a treasure hunt. And, you know, history is kind of the star of National Treasure, right? Like, yes, we all love Nick Cage. We love watching him <laughs> run around Philadelphia. But history is the main character. And then to impart a learning exercise like that with action and romance and humor no, I mean, it's no wonder they were so successful. It's such a fun ride. Like what isn't there not to love? I loved how multi-generational it was. Kids loved it, parents loved it, grandparents loved that. So hopefully we can recapture the hearts of the original fan base and bring in some new treasure hunters with this show. Fans first meet your character in episode two and uh, it is said that she wants to make an impact uh, you know, when she first appears uh, on scene. Uh, I would like to hear from you a little bit about her back uh, background and, you know, back history. Yeah, so 
I love this character so much. She feels like an extension of myself. Um, she's a very type A, goal-oriented, focused young woman. I think she's always felt like she had a little bit of something to prove um, to be a woman in a very male-facing profession like that. So she went nose to the grindstone and she was top of her class at Quantico. She was given a super high-end jo like job immediately after that in D.C., and she made one mistake. She made one mistake and got kicked down to the Baton Rouge field office. Essentially, they said, we're not going to fire you, but you're going to go from the D.C. office, the pinnacle of what it is to be working in the FBI, to a sleepy town in the backwoods of Louisiana. So she gets there and she's like an underdog. She essentially has to rebuild her professional reputation. And that was a really cool jumping off point for me to feel like you're somebody who just has an uphill climb now to regain the respect of your peers and your boss. And so she shows up in Baton Rouge and in the first few days, Jess and Tasha come in holding a box that they say is a relic and there's a treasure hunt and somebody's been kidnapped and agent Ross naturally goes, get out of here. Like this is a joke. And then she just can't shake that. Maybe there's something more to this, that maybe these kids are telling the truth. Maybe she was too hasty and rushing them out the door. Maybe she wasn't listening to them because they were kids. Um, and that's something we kind of talk about in this series. Like people never want to give kids the benefit of the doubt. I say kids, they're, you know, young twenties, but um, <laughs> you know, there's always a bit of an uphill battle when you're a younger person bringing information to an older person. And you know, the same way Agent Ross's boss doesn't listen to her and she does it anyway, these kids just go on without Agent Ross. And then Agent Ross goes, I missed something. There's something going on here. And she starts essentially following along on this treasure hunt a couple of paces behind, figuring out, is this real friend or foe? Who is this Billy character played by the incomparable Catherine Zeta-Jones? Why does she keep crossing my desk? So Agent Ross has a whole treasure hunt of her own that runs in tandem with the kids. So. Yeah, I really love how she can be pretty resourceful and uh, even defy orders if she believes she's in the right. Um, but what is it that you like about her? I just loved that she has the emotional intelligence to take a step back and go, here are all the facts on the table. These are the words coming out of somebody's mouth. These are their actions. But then she can also go, life is very complicated and nuanced and people make decisions for reasons that we don't necessarily understand. She knows that these kids are breaking the law probably, but she also doesn't go criminal. She goes, what's the story? There's more to it than meets the eye. So I love how she balances empathy, towards her fellow man with being very good at her job. I just thought that was a really cool dynamic on the page. Is there a particular line, scene, or situation uh, you liked, uh, you know, involving your character? One of the first, in, it's, it's in episode two. You know, it's so funny. I don't think it actually made it into the final cut, but I remember there was this one line which informed everything about Agent Ross for me. It's late at night, everybody else has left the office. Her boss walks in and goes, Ross, what are you still doing here? And I said, my apartment is a couch, a TV and a refrigerator. I basically only go there to sleep. And when I read that, I was like, that is this girl. Her life is doing the best job she can. Being here in this office after hours, burning that midnight oil because she just can't let something go, that is Ross. She is so dogged. She's not going home to sleep when she thinks there's a story there. Um, and I love that line. And that kind of informed everything for me moving forward. That's a pretty cool line. And yeah, unfortunately, I didn't uh, hear it in episode mm -hmm. two. So I don't think it made it, which I was like surprised, but also it's something that resonated with Lyndon so much. I don't know if the audience would have picked up on that, but for Lyndon, that was like the ethos for this character. 
Speaking of Lyndon, how would you react if someone breaks into the room uh, right now and tells you to look for a hidden treasure? <laughs> I would be like, let's go, let's go. <laughs> I was always the kid who was like kicking baseboards to see if something was gonna unlock. Like, I'm not joking. I remember my grandma had really squeaky tile in her old house and I would be on hands and knees trying to like pull up tiles to see if there was treasure in the walls. I always thought I was gonna find a treasure as a kid. And then as an adult, this has turned into an obsession for vintage <laughs> hunting. Like, I love going to antique stores or um, auctions, yard sales. I love finding the things that people don't know what they were and then they get rid of it. Like I have so many little treasures in my house of things that I've found on the side of the road, found in thrift shops. So yeah, if somebody walked through the door right now and was like treasure, I'd be like, let's go, let me grab my shoes. Um, yes, <laughs> I was expecting an answer like that. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I who would? If somebody was like, hey, there's a treasure, like who's going to say no? <laughs> yeah. The adventure of a lifetime. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anyone in particular with whom you have bonded on the set? The whole group became so close so fast. Um, uh, the the guy who plays um, my love interest, who you'll meet in episode three, his name's uh, Tommy Sava. He plays this coroner who Agent Ross ends up teaming up with because nobody in the FBI office is really going to help her. She enlists the help of this really funny, quirky, cute coroner. And uh, he and I became very, very close. Um, we just like hit it off immediately. Like the chemistry was there. He feels like my brother from another mother. Um, so yeah, we had a great time and people are going to love the Agent Ross, Dr. Zeke dynamic. I think it's, it's really fun. I saw just uh, four episodes, uh, so but I, I still I don't want to make any spoilers, but right. I, I would like to, to hear from you if you could tease a little bit about your character's journey throughout the series. It's so hard to talk about Ross's journey in the series because she's very directly tied to spoilers, especially towards the end. But what I can say is... In the first few episodes, you don't really know if Ross is on the side of Jess and Tasha and Ethan and Oren. You know, you don't know if she's going to be a hindrance to them or she's going to be an ally. She ultimately does become an ally to them. And it's really good to have friends in high places. And what better to have a, an FBI agent maybe watching your back if you're potentially breaking the law. So I will say that as the season goes on, Agent Ross starts working a little more closely with our treasure hunters and um, aiding them. A, a couple more, and then I'll let you go. Uh, I would like to hear from you your plans for 2023 work uh, related, obviously. Oh, gosh, hopefully we're going to go back and shoot season two. That's what we're all waiting to hear on. Um, I imagine we'll find out early in the in the new year. Um, so hopefully my plans will be shooting National Treasure season two. But that's that's the only thing I'm really focused on right now. I think in the meantime, I would love to go back to theater and do a play. I mean, I started on the stage. Uh, we've got wonderful theaters here in LA. So I might uh, try to go do a play in the meantime. That's like the best way to learn. It's like the best way to freshen up your skills. But yeah, hopefully season two will be starting shooting uh, late spring. 2023, uh, sorry, 2022 has been, you know, the franchise year uh, for you. I mean, National Treasure, Fear the Walking Dead. Um, mm -hmm. How was it your experience with, uh, you know, relating to those franchises? And uh, if you are willing to, you know, uh, try again uh, or aiming at another franchises in 2023? Well, walking into a franchise is great because you already have that fan base. The world has already been established um, and you get to come in and just kind of like live in this amazing thing that has already been set up. Like, yes, jumping on Fear the Walking Dead for that episode where Madison made her return, like everyone was waiting for that moment and, you know, getting to be a part of that was really, really special. Obviously, Fans have been wanting this extension of National Treasure now for years. So to walk into that is great. Like franchises are awesome. Um, and luckily, Disney 
is spearheading a ton. I would love to join the Marvel universe at some point. I would love to join one of the um, like Star Wars shows. I loved Andor, I love the Mandalorian. So being employed by Disney now is such a <laughs> gift because like, if I get to work with one company, like this is the one to work with. They spearhead so many franchises that I would love to do. So yeah, I mean, if any of them are watching, Make me a Marvel villain. I want to be a villain. <laughs> well, fingers crossed it will yeah. uh, happen uh, next year. Lyndon, do you have any last messages? I'm just so excited that people are going to see this starting tomorrow. I, I can't wait to hear the immediate feedback. I love that you get two episodes to start to really kind of sink your teeth into our reimagining of this. Um, I just hope it's something that people watch with their family over the holidays, have a great time. It's wonderful, just popcorn entertainment. Maybe you'll learn something along the way, but you're definitely going to laugh. You're definitely going to get invested in this treasure hunt. You're going to do it with us in real time. So yeah, I'm just excited to see the reaction starting tomorrow. I think I'm going to be on my phone a lot tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Lyndon, thank you very much for giving us a little bit of your time today. Best of luck with all your upcoming projects. And hopefully I will hear again from you in the future. Hopefully. Happy holidays. It's great to talk to you.